Good evening, everyone. My name's Joe. Call us Victor Echo One Bravo Whiskey Victor. Just coming into the shack here. I'll turn some of the other audio down so we don't uh, fight with it. Just going to give a quick uh, preview here. Let me just turn this down. Turn this down for a second. Uh, quick overview of the shack. Some web SDR receivers. There's two or three of them there. See the digital displays. Just some homemade fellas. And um, another three or four inside that box. Miscellaneous stuff. Um, one little uh, MCF HF all band uh, receiver and uh, a general receiver as well as an uh, all band transmitter. What's that? About 15 watts. Uh, has all the digital modes. Uh, works very well. What's very nice about this is that um, the audio and the um, the push to talk and all that, uh, both receive and transmit, just goes out to one cable here. Uh, let me see if I can grab it here. Uh, one USB cable. And you plug it into the computer, and the computer sees it as another sound card and all that. So uh, there's no audio cables that are necessary. Uh, no, nothing else besides this to run full digital modes. And just a quick look on the side. Uh, external speaker, microphone, and of course the power. And uh, you have all the uh, the waterfall stuff. Um, let me see if I can hold it down here. Uh, and now you see the waterfall uh, as well. It's got good sounding audio and works uh, works great so far. So let me just turn it back here. I'm just uh, looking at and uh, working rid of uh, digital mode. And uh, you may not be able to see that, but I'm just running the uh, WSJTX. Uh, revision 3 is the FT8 mode at the moment. And uh, let's uh, get right down over to the uh, bit X type stuff. Quick look, uh, this is uh, the first bit X I've made. Put it into a plastic case, uh, gets at about 10 watts. Works very well. Of course, you can put more if you want to use a higher PA voltage. It's the Reduino version, it uh, runs the uh, LCD and it's converted for both. Um, uh, digital uh, upper sideband, lower sideband. And again, uh, an excellent uh, little unit. Uh, however, I come across uh, a friend in India, VU2 SPF, who had developed some code and we worked together to uh, to modify it for the different things that we wanted to do with the bit X. And we refer to it as a universal uh, TFT touch controller. So let's just look over here. And um, the first one I did was I mounted it into a uh, a larger, quite a lot, quite a bit larger case. It was a Dell case. I have it laying on the floor, uh, just over here. I'll have a quick run if you don't get too dizzy. Uh, this is the bed X as well, and um, as you can see, it's quite a bit larger, big heat, heat sink, multi band that I've been playing with. But the, the real key thing I'm trying to point out is it has a, a TFT uh, touch controller. So I thought, well, that's great, and I happen to have another bed X. Let's wander back here to the main part of the shack. And I had this case, oh, I don't know, for about 25 years, maybe longer. It used to be an old uh, multimeter, digital multimeter type case, uh, maybe about uh, seven inches deep. And it's got a slanted front. And I thought, wow, well, you know, that'd be great if I could shove that inside. And there you have it. Um, the nice part about the digital touch control stuff, of course, is that you don't have to put any more buttons uh, than you wish. Uh, okay, I'll just move up here a bit. So you can see the display right now. Um, two basic displays. One is the square buttons, like I have right now, and there's a round version. I, I, I kind of prefer the uh, square button at the moment. But anyway, I'll back off just a moment here. Get a better look at the, the unit itself. I use a Vox Arduino for it. Um, a Duino Vox, it's called. But uh, anyway, the rig here has a volume control, an RF control, and I actually did put a rotary encoder on the side for, uh, you know, changing the normal frequency. However, the touch control works so well that uh, it, uh, the, uh, the rotary encoder button kind of just sits there idle. So let's just turn it up here and get some focus on it without getting you too dizzy as well. I can't hear that. Oh, 
Somebody talking there. That's a girl's thing. Let me just turn it down here anyway. Okay, so what you have here at the front, full digital touch control. Uh, you can uh, touch it to the left to make it go down, and touch it to the right to make it go back up here. A little hard to see when I'm trying to hold it at a reasonable distance and uh, touch the buttons here, but uh, you'll get the idea. See, so just very, very little touch actually. It moves up and down. There's a hundred channels. And I'll go back here and just to the 100 area. You have, um, so you got the memory VFO, you get the A BFO, and you get the B VFO. These two here are actually showing what the other uh, frequencies that are stored. That's the memory, what's stored in memory uh, on channel 1. That's the B VFO. And if you just touch this, you can see that now the frequency that was down here is transferred up. That's the uh, B VFO. And if I do it one more time, you'll now see that the MVFO is up here, or storage, and the A and B frequencies are stored down below. Um, you have all the bands, 40 meter, 80 meter, um, 10, 12, 15, 17, 20, and you can add whatever band you want. Nice thing about that, they're all added in there. All the wiring and all the coatings there, all you do is you add a relay to turn on whatever particular band filter, uh, band pass filter or whatever that you're using for the particular band. So I'll put it back to 40 here. There we go. And again, this is your step. You can move it up or down. Uh, lower sideband, upper sideband. Save. This is um, when you've got something in memory or in the VFO and you want to save it to memory. Uh, you go through a few steps basically and then you do the save button. The, um, that's the BFO. Uh, that's it to show something that's um, in the memory and have it on the, put to display uh, the M function and on the 30 meters there so that's why I flicked over to it uh, let me flick back to 40 here anyway uh, let's have a look a little, a little closer I hate that bouncing around there I'm gonna have to get a little pedestal uh, F2, 3 and 4 are for future use the transmit uh, TXMO basically uh, there's a built-in timer and if you go over a minute and a half again that's adjustable uh, it, it shuts the transmitter off and but if you push this button here uh, and leave it on red oops it's going on there we go then that means that the timer is disabled that's all so I'll put that back here um, otherwise it's pretty self-explanatory every button that you see here a touch control uh, has the option of putting a physical button so you know if you like the uh, the sidebands to be a physical button uh, or the rotary as the rotary encoder I have on the side. Um, that's all you have to do is just add the buttons and pick, take one of the control buttons that's for that particular item and then the other side goes to ground. So very, very simple. Again, this is a, uh, you know, the, uh, a creation um, by VU2 Sierra Papa Foxtrot, SP Bagnar in India. And we kind of work together on the project and uh, try to make it available to everybody that might be interested. Um, best thing else, if you want to see a little more, of course, you can look on some of the other videos. There's more information. Um, and this version right now, I think, is 2.5. So there you have it. Pretty quick. Um, let me see if there's really anything around there. <clears throat> get, get up here. I'm cycling at 1K right now. Fairly quiet. Oh, I see. Okay. And it, this was kind of a wrap-up. Yeah, yeah. I haven't taken a stretch test since I had this. It's, it's a great little transceiver. You know, well, I, why I wanted to back that off here. This is my third one, whatever, and uh, lots of fun putting them together. But uh, you want to compare, compare the receive against the commercial rigs and everything else? Uh, it's really, uh, you know, very, very comparable. Uh, of course, the other rigs have more features, um, but uh, considering that you, you make this from a kit and uh, you can actually reprogram it, and there's thousands of users uh, that are willing to share things they've done and to, to show some of the ideas that they've uh, you know, used to make the, uh, the rig better. So anyway, that's uh, a quick run. I realize it's pretty fast, but uh, I thought I'd just up update uh, 
with the latest square version versus the round here. So I'll just back off here a little bit. Um, oh yeah, I, I, I never really mentioned it, but uh, let me look here if you can see it. Yeah, that's uh, one of the websites that we have, uh, which has information on uh, all kinds of tech stuff. It's my own site there, whatever. I'm just doing up some new videos there. And I guess since I'm going to the shack here, I'll just pan over here. This is where I have the flex radio stuff that I usually play around with. A um, couple other computers for uh, doing programming and uh, playing around the shack. And then one more down that other end to do some programming and troubleshooting, whatever. Okay, I've got an assortment here. This is my playground. And uh, everything is pretty well wired up by voice there. Um, hey Google, turn ham one off. You got it, turning ham one off. Yeah, you know, so you can really play with it. Uh, hey Google, turn ham desk off. You got it, turning the ham desk off. Hey Echo, or Echo. Echo, turn ham desk off. Okay. Yeah, it was hard of hearing there. Anyway. This is V1BWV Joe in New Brunswick, 7-3. You have a great evening. Hey Google, turn ham room off. Sure, turning off two things. 